ました N です This is Brother Tony, and you're listening to the Gospel Podcast. I took a look in the old black book, thrilled me through and through. If you've been saved and born again, it's bound to thrill you too. I was reading along about going home, and I found to my surprise, I'm already there in Jesus, I'm living on the other side. Thank you for tuning in to the Gospel Podcast. If you have your Bible, get it ready, and I'll meet you there in just a few moments. Every day as the Lord leads, we bring you another message from the Word of God. This is a Bible preaching ministry. I am a Baptist preacher, but I'm not a denominational preacher. I'm a Bible preacher. And this means that I preach Bible doctrine, not Baptist doctrine. In other words, I simply preach the Bible as it is to men as they are. The goal of this ministry is to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ, edify the saint, and convert the sinner. You can find us online at thegospelpodcast.us. You can email me at brothertony at thegospelpodcast.us. Please subscribe to our podcast, like and share us on Facebook. Finally, let me say that this ministry is not a replacement for your local church. In fact, my goal is to stir you up and make you a better student of the Word of God, a witness for Jesus Christ, a help to your pastor, and a more active and faithful local church member. Well, that's enough of this. Let's pray and get right into our message. Father. We thank you again for another opportunity to be here on the Gospel Podcast, to be preaching the Word of God. I pray, God, that you'd bless this time, and I ask it in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right, today we're continuing our messages uh, for the preacher, and uh, we're talking about uh, verse number in John chapter number 2, Verse number uh, 16, let's start there again. And said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered, verse number 17, that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Now verse number uh, 22, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now, I told you yesterday, as I, uh, as I was uh, preaching the word of God, I told you yesterday that we need to allow the Holy Spirit of God into our preaching and not rely on the wisdom of man, or solely the wisdom of man. You become a, uh, what, we, what I call a... Um, a, uh, um, I, I just clicked on something. So uh, uh, what I call a uh, recluse theologian, uh, someone who just studies the Bible only and they don't study any other books. They think the Bible is their only answer. And now the Bible is the sole authority. Let me again say this now. I don't want you to go saying that I say you got to trust what other people write and say no, 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 a thousand times no. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Don't say that that's what I mean because that's not what I mean. You know what really frustrates me? Let me tell you this. What really frustrates me is when you're preaching and teaching or even when you're talking Bible with somebody, and I've had this so many times, it really frustrates me, and I'm going to get this off my chest just so I can preach uh, with a good spirit here. You talk and you preach or you're talking, you're, you're trying to show somebody something from the Scripture, and the next thing you know, they twist what you say and they say that this is what you mean when you said what you said you know what that makes me so angry no i'm a preacher i believe in words i believe in words i believe every word of god is pure that's singular that means god chose every word perfectly now i am not perfect and especially in my preaching i'm not perfect why is that because i have a fallible mind but i do try to choose my words when i'm having a discussion about the Bible or when I'm preaching and when I'm teaching the Bible. I try to choose my words carefully. You'll hear me say uh, all the time here at the Gospel Podcast, you'll hear me say it when you hear me preaching live, uh, uh, when you hear me preaching at church, I mean live, uh, what, the, what I'll do is I'll say, no, let me take that back. That's not what I meant. And somebody will say, well, that's what you said. No, I just clarified it. That's not what I meant. I made a mistake when I said that. Hello, I'm allowed to make a mistake. Now, see, that's the difference between somebody writing somebody and somebody preaching, and especially preaching like me, 
spontaneously. In other words, I preach as the Spirit of God leads me. That's the way I preach. I showed you my notes yesterday, and I still haven't moved from my notes. I'm still right here at the first part of my notes. We haven't went very far. And yesterday I told you I left off, and this is where we have to go now. Uh, as an extemporaneous preacher, I leave room for the Spirit of God. You know, I've tried to preach and teach series in my church and teach series as I'm doing the gospel podcast, but I leave room for to go where God sends me. You know what that means? That means that God knows who's going to listen. God knows what they need and God uses me to do it. I'm just a messenger. I'm, I'm, I want to be led by the spirit of God. Now, let me say this to you. When all, all that you study, I told you about the recluse theologian and I told you that you end up with second Peter chapter number one. Uh, I remembered the right passage today, Second Peter chapter number one, I told you that what happens, you become, you uh, rely on uh, what, what the Bible says as, uh, where it talks about, the, um, I remember the passage, now I can't remember the word. Um, Second Peter 1. Oh, private interpretation. That's what it is, private interpretation. And that's because if you don't study or know nothing else, uh, if you don't learn from what other men have learned, and we're going to show you this, that other men have learned things, other men have learned things that are not written in the Scripture that teach the Scripture. And this is the point that I was making yesterday. And let me, let me clarify that or let me say it again. Other men have taught things other men have learned things that are not specifically found in the Scripture, but they teach the things of the Scripture. Uh, in other words, you'll see things in the Bible, you'll see things in the Bible that they may not be 100% clarified in the Bible, and then God gives a preacher, a preacher of the church, he'll give them light. I'm talking about the body of Christ, and that local church is the seat where God puts things today, uh, where, and he trusts the church with the preacher. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'm not going to go there. But my point that I'm trying to get to you today to understand is, is that the Bible now, understand this, the Bible, even though it is our sole authority for everything, the Bible, God will use men and he will show them things in order to teach us some things. And let me give you, uh, let me give you an example of what I'm trying to tell you here. Well, before I get into the example, let me say this. I might not remember the example. Let me write this down. Oh, my goodness. All right. And and so we got to let ourselves be open to be able to teach the Word of God. Now, and you should study your Bible, study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh, the Bible is your sole authority for all matters of faith, practice, and teaching. There's no question. Anything that I teach, anything that I preach, you should hold it up, uh, mag put the magnifying glass of the Scripture with the Spirit of God, put that over top of anything that anybody says, teaches, or preaches, and see if it lines up with the Bible. And, you know, that's why I say, I said it before, as I'm preaching and teaching the Word of God, uh, don't let it grow cold in your ears except believing it when it is the Word of God. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse 13, we'll get to that uh, maybe today, I don't know. 1 Thess Thessalonians 2 and uh, 13. Uh, but here's the thing now. When it, when it comes to us studying the Bible, if that's all you're doing, you're missing it. My point, now listen, I already said that yesterday, so I'm, I can't keep going on here. And I know there's more to say about it, but I got to move on. I have to move on. So it's not just studying the Bible. And this is where I left off yesterday, telling you that you need to read your Bible. Now, I have a, a preacher, and I use his material for something. He says that God never promised, God never promised to bless a Bible reader. That's what he said. He said, God never promised to bless somebody who just memorizes the Bible. God promised to bless the meditator in God's word. And that's true, but it's not all the truth, because he said God never promised to, to bless a Bible reader, and he says it several times in his, uh, in his curriculum, his teaching, again, that I use. And you know, who, you know who I'm talking about, if you know who he is, so I don't have to name his name. And uh, every time it's been said, and here's the example that I want to give to you, every time that he said it, it just, I knew it was wrong. And you know how I knew it was wrong? By Bible reading. By Bible reading, I didn't have to study the Bible. I didn't need to study the Bible to know that he was wrong in what he was saying.
I didn't have to do that. And, you know, that's where people, uh, people sometimes, uh, they study something or they'll get a hold of something like this fella did. He got a hold of a verse. He got a hold of a thought. And he said, you know, this is the truth. And because he couldn't find or maybe he didn't study, I don't know what the problem was, uh, but he made a mistake. He made an error. And why he made that error may, might be because uh, he favored something about meditating and meditating is true. And uh, he uses uh, some good verses to show that, which is important. Uh, but there are things that, listen, the Bible makes a promise. The Bible makes a promise in uh, Revelation chapter number one, Revelation chapter number one, and it says this now, uh, Revelation chapter number one, and it says, uh, blessed, verse number three, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. You know what that says? Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth this prophecy. Uh, well, maybe he took it to mean only, you're saying, uh, you want to justify him. Maybe he only took it to mean that, you know, that only means when you read the book of Revelation. That only means when you read the book of Revelation. Okay, well, let's try to give him that one. Let's see if we can give him that one if we really think that's right. Okay, only in the book of Revelation, and that's why he said it, because that verse is found uh, with that exact phrase, blessed is he that readeth is only found in the book of Revelation. What about this? Uh, Revelation 22. This is in the same book. Huh? Listen, listen. This is in the same book, Revelation 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. What's he talking about? He's talking about the book of Revelation, right? Now, that's what you say when you study, and that's probably what he would have said if I ever would have had a chance and opportunity to talk to him about it. He would have said, well, it said this book. They that hear the words of this prophecy. Uh, so in verse uh, Revelation 1 and 3. So he would have said that it means that this prophecy, which is the prophecy of the book of Revelation, because Revelation is a book of prophecy. And that's probably what he would have said now. I, uh, and that's another reason why I'm not naming him, because you know who he is if you know him. Uh, and I'm not condemning him. I'm just saying this is what I, susp I suppose that he would have said. And But I want to show you something, How and I'm going to prove to you how I know that what I'm going to be teaching you in these lessons is very true, especially about Bible reading. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto the, these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You say, well, that's just the book of Revelation again. And that might have been what some people say, but we don't really believe that, do we? Why? Because this, and if any man shall take away uh, from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now, you know what we believe as Bible believers, and especially for some of my contemporaries, some people that I affiliate or I associate with, uh, people who believe that the old King James Bible is the pure inspired, preserved Word of God. Uh, we believe that that reference there, that reference is a reference to uh, the words of God, meaning the very words that God, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. We believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You do too. Uh, and so since we believe that, we believe that when he's talking about you should not take away anything out of this book, you should not, he says that uh, if any man add to these things, God's going to add to him. If any man take away from the words of this book, uh, from the book of this prophecy. So God, God talks about that there. Now, let me say this. Also now, uh, let me get you to hear this in, in uh, Psalm chapter number 12, Psalm chapter number 12, verse 6 and 7, uh, it says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver uh, tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Now listen, you know what that means? That God is telling us his words are pure. Not just the words of the prophecy of this book, that's the book of Revelation. So when you're reading your Bible, you're blessed when you read your Bible. This preacher says that you're not blessed when you read your Bible. The Bible doesn't say anywhere in it. He would say over and over and over again, 
again. If you have his curriculum, you know what I'm talking about over and over and over again. God never promised to bless the Bible reader. That's not true. He did promise to bless the Bible reader. There's other passages, but this is the one that just uh, uh, destroys that thought. And again, I'm not trying to condemn him. He's already got his, he's already, uh, he's already with God in heaven. He's absent from the body and present with the Lord. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to teach you need to be Bible readers. And I'm going to get to my point here now, because we know he's talking about the entire words of God, because in Deuteronomy ch chapter number uh, four, or is it chapter number eight and three? Boy, I get this one messed up too. Uh, well, let me go back here and get it just so I make sure I get it right. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter number four, and look at what it says in verse number one. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth unto you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Now, in Revelation chapter number uh, Revelation chapter number 22, I showed you that in Revelation chapter number 22, there's the words. We know that uh, the words of this prophecy. So he's not just talking about the words of that one book. And when somebody reads the Bible, we're not just talking about that one book. Well, how do you know that? Well, because now we have two witnesses. We have a witness in prov we have a witness in uh, Revelation 22, and we have a, a witness in uh, Deuteronomy chapter four and two. Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 6 and 6 and 7 and 8, uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 3, uh, Matthew 4 and 4, and now, lastly, let's go to Proverbs chapter number 30 and look at verse number 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him, and add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So now, there's a threefold testimony here to the the words of God. What am I saying to you? What am I saying to you? When I say the Bible is your sole authority, when I say Bible study and you studying the Bible just by yourself is not going to cut it. What I'm telling you is you need to be reading your Bible every day, especially preacher. You need to be reading your Bible every day, every day, every day, every day. What, why do I say that? Well, because this is my example. When that man said this, when that preacher said that, I knew he was wrong. How did I know he was wrong? Did I have to study what he said? No. You know why? Because I'm a Bible reader. I heard uh, uh, Dr. Greg Estep years and years ago, I was uh, studying one of his, uh, he had some tapes that I uh, got from a, his correspondence course and I was studying and he said that you're, the more you read your Bible, and I believe this and I've taught it, I tell people this all the time, the more re you read your Bible, listen to me, the more you read your Bible, the more your mind becomes like a concordance of the word of God. But that comes by reading your Bible. That that will come by reading your Bible. And listen, what it, listen. The, uh, now we're in John chapter number twelve. Now, let me stop here, and we can move in our lesson. Uh, I hope John chapter number twelve, starting uh, tomorrow, we'll get back into our lesson. Uh, or I don't know if I'm going to do it on the weekend, but uh, John chapter number twelve. Uh, go to John chapter number twelve and look at verse number sixteen. John chapter twelve and verse number sixteen. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they, those th th uh, they, that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. So now he's in John chapter 12, he's preparing for the, uh, he made his triumphal entry into that. Now listen, they said he remembered. Now when you read your Bible, there you're going to remember some things that were written. And you may not know exactly where it's at, but uh, now listen, and how are you going to get that memory? How's that memory going to come to you? Well, let's go to John chapter 14 and let me give you this verse and we're going to, and we'll pick this up tomorrow or the next time we study this, this series of lessons. Verse number 26 uh, of John chapter 14 and verse number 26. And the Bible says this, whom the, uh, the uh, John 14, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. We're going to get into that too. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That means that, now listen, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. 
Amen. Now we're going to pick this up right here uh, tomorrow, or like I said, our next lesson here, we're going to pick it up right here. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying real simple, real simple, real simple is that you need to read your Bible every day. You need to read your Bible every day. That's what you need to do. We're going to pick it up right here in John 14 uh, tomorrow as we get in there. What I'm trying to tell you is real simple. Just read your Bible every day. God will bring things. The Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. And we'll get more into that when we come to you with our next lesson here on the preacher and his Bible study, okay? Now, remember, uh, Jesus is right for whatever is wrong. Let me say to you, dear sinner, if you're lost, uh, this is something that uh, is pr too deep for you to understand because these are some things, uh, these are spiritually discerned things. Uh, so you need to be saved. You get born again, and then you could understand, excuse me, the things of the Spirit of God. Now, these are for, these are for Bible teachers. These are for Bible preachers. These are for students of the Word of God. I want you to be saved, though. Would you get born again? Would you trust Jesus' uh, price that he paid on Calvary for the redemption of your soul? Would you ask him to save you from the penalty of your sin and ask him to deliver you so you don't have to die and go to hell? Uh, for the saint, now remember, as I said before, Jesus is right for whatever is wrong. Father, we thank you uh, for an opportunity to preach and teach the Word of God. Lord, please continue to give us understanding, wisdom, and light as we try to prepare, preach, and teach the Word of God. And we ask it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen and amen. The king met a beggar on a lonely road one day. A strange occurrence took place as you will see. The beggar fell upon his knees and he cried, Oh, pardon me, I am unworthy in thy presence to be. The king looked at the beggar and said, You've been set free. Your sins are all forgiven, now you're born in royalty. And so the king and the beggar walked off arm in arm. You see, that king was Jesus and the beggar was me. Now one so rich became so poor that a beggar rich might be The Son of God became the Son of Man That we poor fallen sons of men the sons of God might be I can't explain it, God's wondrous saving plan The king looked at the beggar and said you've been set free Your sins are all forgiven, now you're born in royalty And so the king and the beggar walked off arm in arm, you see That king was Jesus, and the beggar was me That king was Jesus, and the beggar was me